when I was hearing the last speaker, actually the last several speakers, I thought of a poem by El, uh, Emily Bronte in which she says, what have those lonely mountains worth revealing? And that poem, I think, uh, if you think about it, helps bring out in you who you are because it helps you wonder about things, wanting to explore what something is like and what something might do and what will be revealed if you go through the next door or across the stream or over the next mountain uh, or just try something you've been wondering about. Um, I use that line in an outdoor school that we're running at Turner's Creek outside of Kennedyville along uh, the Sassafras River. The line we use though is not what have those lonely mountains worth revealing. The line we use in canoes as we paddle around the different um, areas and forested wetlands is what have those lonely marshes worth revealing. Um, I'm retired now from politics, so I was told not to talk about the recent Supreme Court decision about Obamacare. <laughs> so I won't mention that. Um, but I, I spent a little time in Washington and other places, and during my exploration of uh, Washington and the country and the planet, I was exposed to many, many smart people parliamentarians, lawyers, judges, uh, you name it, from the Ukraine to Australia to Ethiopia to India to England to Norway to Switzerland um, to Washington, D.C., the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Leader of the Senate. Um, and what happened, though, after a few years, it was revealed to me um, that almost no one had a frame of reference or knowledge or information about human beings and their activity being compatible with nature's design. And the reason I found out over the years that that's so very important it is be essentially because the population is seven billion people and the resources we have are diminishing. And that's only going to get worse unless we figure out how we can balance our lives with nature's design so that the future generations will have the same quality of life that we do and we can sustain life on planet earth by understanding how our activity can be compatible and sustainable and balanced. So not wanting to go back into the fray in Washington DC or run for political office anywhere because I've been there and done that, so to speak. Although I would encourage everyone here to certainly run for Congress, and I'll back you up and I'll support your efforts, although it hasn't been too successful in the recent past. Um, and I knew I should have got in a little bit sooner. Uh, so if anybody in here, and this is not supposed to be political, so I better stop right there. But I would encourage all of you to just go ahead and throw your hat in the ring, see what happens. What have those lonely politicians worth revealing? Um, so far it's been, no, I was going to say dysfunctional, but I'm not going to say that. We live in a great country and it's, it's a democracy. What I want to do, though, is to help reveal to you that we are in the throes of a dawn of a very different age for a lot of reasons. Right now. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. It's not a decade from now. The dawning of the new age of difficulty and complexity for the planet, the third planet from the sun, is right now. So what um, do we need to do? We need to be like nature. Every flower has a sole purpose. is to produce seeds for the next generation. Every living thing, every living thing, has one purpose, and that's to produce and nurture the next generation. So where do we stand? Where does civilization stand? Where does a human species stand in doing that for the next generation? Is that our sole goal? Is that our purpose in nurturing the next generation so that they understand how they can live and sustain their life and respect and understand and be knowledgeable about life on planet Earth in all its varied diversity? Norman Cousins 
once said, knowledge is a solvent for danger. Climate change is dangerous. The end of the ages of oil is dangerous. The global marketplace and increasingly required to grow is dangerous because that's not sustainable. Knowledge is a solvent for danger. So what do we do? Is that our purpose? Is that the purpose of human beings to teach the next generation how they can live in a global marketplace that is unsustainable? To live where energy that we have always known in the recent 100 years of the industrial age that is running out and will be over by the end of this century? The Colorado forest fires, the rising sea levels, the changing temperatures, the increasing um, series of droughts or rain events. Do we know about those things? Enough to teach the next generation to be prepared and not be duped by arrogant or dogmatic or ignorant politicians that don't have in mind good public policy but sustaining their own political careers? Well, I apologize for that speech. Um, but what I wanted to do was to run through a few pictures and show you what we're trying to do at an outdoor school at Turner's Creek called the Sassafras Environmental Education Center. I'm retired from a lot of different things. And I decided to run this outdoor school the best that I can with some very good people so that the children that we teach when they get out of high school, they will have a fundamental frame of reference as to how they can live sustainably, how they can live compatibly with nature's design. And so some of the photographs, all of the photographs were taken at Turner's Creek in the Sassafras River. But these are some of the things we want to have in their frame of reference. This photograph of the beach. How do you get from a stone to a butterfly in evolution? By doing that, you bring in all the varied various aspects of science and math. But when you teach about evolution, when you go from a stone to a butterfly, in this place, you can pick up the stone and you can see butterflies. What do we know about the geologic structure of the planet and how latitude and geology has affected climate and ecology? In our school, we can teach about the geologic structure of the Delmarva Peninsula by picking up a wet stone and identifying it as some various aspect of a conglomerate or part of a sedimentary rock and where it came from, maybe the Susquehanna River, maybe the Appalachian Mountains. But this is the structure upon which you stand. This is the earth that you have experienced. But most often, most of us don't think much about it. But all the aspects of science and math and geology and the careers that can be pursued from that start with a wet stone and a discussion. And the, then the curiosity about what is revealed as a result of that becomes a little bit more Interesting. The flow of energy and matter. The idea of the dynamics of thermal dynamics. Every student should know the source of energy and how it flows through the planet by looking at a water snake at Turner's Creek trying to consume. Anybody guess what it's consuming? A catfish, right? Intergenerational responsibility. What is our responsibility when it comes to young people? Our responsibility is to give them as much knowledge as possible. And while we're doing that out there, we're picking up crabs or stones or fish or catching little snakes or eating mulberries or raspberries or acorns. But all of it has to do with our fingers and our hands and our dexterity. And Bernowski said in his book, The Ascent of Man, when he was talking about evolution, the evolution of the brain, he made a remarkable statement, which I've always found to be true. The hand is the force that drives the subsequent evolution of the brain. 
And when you get kids outside, little kids, big kids, round kids, skinny kids, and they're out there getting wet or walking or feeling the heat or feeling the rain or even being stung by a bee, they're using their hands. They're using then an extraordinary amount of effort into curiosity. To walk in the forest and feel the sunlight. And take notes about little critters they find on the edge of the forest. And wondering about the chrysalis and where it came from. And who taught that caterpillar to design that home? And take notes while kneeling down in the grass. Sometimes early dew, sometimes the heat of the day. And trying to understand the specific genetic code that gave a spider an understanding about the geometry of nature so that it could design this geometric structure. But we humans are more than just dependent upon a genetic code to give us instinct. We have curiosity to appreciate the spider, the blue heron skeletal structure, the beaver, or a wolf spider. And the curiosity and the expressions of these faces looking at these things, exploring what else can be next, and trying to understand that muskrats make their homes every fall from the stems of American lotus blossom in this tidal pond. The beaver does this, the spider does this very specific thing, but we humans can not only do all of that, but find the fundamental sense of appreciation in doing that. And part of it is while that lonely marsh is revealed to young minds and young hands and young fingers and young feet in a tidal pond, or who wants to answer the question? Who wants to wade in a tidal marsh, marsh up to their waist to understand to, that to Takwa Indians, this was a food pantry where you could eat the flower and the stem and the seed pod and the roots. Joseph Staveley lived from 1740 to 1787, 47 years, and yet his marker has been there 225 years. What marker will we leave behind? This landscape, which is carpeted with farms and dotted with fishing villages, is worth revealing to all of our children in a much more sustainable manner. The Indians were sustainable, but that was because they were few in number and their technology was limited. Today, our numbers are wide and large, and our technology is vast. And we consume with great pleasure the bounties of our civilization. But it's only when we have an understanding of the finite planet that we will be able to come up with a management plan that's sustainable. And who will implement that management plan? This little person will inherit the earth from us. And we must be knowledgeable enough to teach this little person, these young people, because the dawn of the new age is upon us. Thank you.